welcome to the Being Human is Good for Business podcast. In each episode, the leadership development experts at Trilogy Effect explore how the process of self-discovery unleashes potential in us all. Now here's your host, Sherilyn Starkey. Hello, I'm your host, Sherilyn Starkey. Welcome to the Being Human is Good for Business podcast. I am delighted to welcome you to our regular chat with the leadership development experts at Trilogy Effect. So we've been exploring the various Enneagram types over the last couple of episodes and learning about how certain personality types have common strengths and outlooks and that they are grouped by centers. So we've already learned about the instinctive center. And so please check out that episode. It's our last episode. And I will put a link in the show notes here so that you can easily find it. But today we are going to look at the feeling center or the heart center. So this includes Enneagram types two, three, and four. And Trilogy Effect partner, Mary Beth Sawicki, welcome to the show. Can you please tell us about the common assets and liabilities of this heart center? I would love to. So as you mentioned, the heart center, the feeling center, it's types two, three, and four. And so what these types have in common is they are seeking attention. And they go about it in different ways. But essentially our types two, three, and four friends want to be seen the way they want to be seen. So um, in a business context, our heart center friends are the ones who are folks who connect and relate. In a business context, their attention will often be on the human systems versus the business systems. And the lens that twos, threes, and fours view the world through is a focus on the personal. It's how am I relating to the people around me? Um, And we'll get into some of the liabilities in more detail, but just briefly, they can over-identify with their emotions, particularly the types twos and fours. If you look at the results versus relationship spectrum, twos and fours will often be on the relationship end of the spectrum and will sometimes compromise results in order to be in relationship with people. And type threes will often be on the results end of that spectrum. And the relationship piece can drop out. So those are just a couple of the liabilities for our heart center types. So Trilogy Effect partner Wendy Apple is the author of Inside Out Enneagram, a game-changing guide for leaders. Wendy, tell us about the Enneagram 2, please. Also known as the helper or the pleaser, how do these people tend to lead? Yeah, sometimes we call type 2 the helper and sometimes we call type 2 the people pleaser. And part of how they lead is through helping and pleasing others um, in in different, you know, everyone's sticking your tongue out at me. (laughs) It is a bit like that because they do often can lead from behind through supporting and helping others be successful. So um, Mary Beth was sticking her tongue out at me because she um, identifies as type two. So Mary Beth of the trilogy effect here um, kind of holds the ground, not kind of, she holds the ground for the heart center, the feeling center of the Enneagram in our trilogy and keeps us focused on relationships. And Mary Beth, like other twos, are very attuned to others, their attention is out on others and they are attuned to others needs others wants others likes others dislikes others feelings and emotions but they're highly attuned almost i call i call mary beth like our tuning fork and and so it's one of their superpowers Um, and and they do often leave behind and and when they really become much more self-aware and step into their power, they often start leading from the front. So can you give us some examples of famous people that we know that present as an Enneagram type two? Okay, um, present, and, and uh, often there's argument on which side she falls, but Oprah Winfrey. Oh yes. Is a potential exemplar of type two. So sometimes people see Oprah as a two, sometimes people see her as a three, 
it's unclear, but she can often present as a type two. You know, she's out there in the audience. She's very caring. She's bringing people forward. Dr. Phil, what's his name? Dr. Oz. You know, she constantly is promoting other people. Gail, her best friend. You know, she's very warm and embracing. And type twos are often um, pretty warm um, and embracing of others. And when Heather um, and Mary Beth and I are uh, working with organizations, you know, and we're in the room with clients, Mary Beth often work in the back channels, you know, tuning into the individuals, talk, you know, she's noticing what's happening with other people. She's kind of, um, you know, on breaks when she sees somebody who's having, she think, perceives as having a hard time, she'll go connect with them. Um, Mary Beth is the glue that holds Heather and I together. She, Definitely. <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and it, not all type twos are identical. You know, they operate in different ways, but this is an example of some of the gifts of type twos and where their focus of attention goes on other people and on relationships. So the, the flip side to that, right, because we talked about what their assets or liabilities are, they lose tension of focus on themselves and their own needs and their own wants and caring for themselves. Um, what's going on underneath the surface is that they uh, maintain their sense of self and identity um, and esteem through uh, getting appreciation and attention from others for their good deeds. So each type has a strategy like this. And, and so for type twos, you know, the path forward is to claim their own power, step out front, not always be the support person behind the scenes, and to take care of their own needs and wants, their own health, whatever that is. Um, it doesn't mean they can't also look out for others, but it's disproportionate often. Yeah, this is the one that, um, you know, it's like the airplane the flight attendant when they're using the oxygen mask emergency procedures it's oh, put yes. the oxygen mask on yourself before helping those who you're with mm -hmm. so sometimes the type two is so busy with the mask on the person beside them that they forget they need oxygen too and actually it's for the greater good that when we see a healthy type two who's really taking care of their needs because they have such a pure and generous heart, usually they're taking care of all of the needs. You know, sometimes people think that the type two is not your archetypical leader, but in fact, they are fantastic leaders. And we've seen them run giant global businesses. And what makes them successful is their attention on their resources, the people who work for them and the people who work for their people and how they're able to structure and guide the workflow to support people's gifts. And they can get the best out of an organization simply by using their gift of attunement to what people are bringing to the party. That's getting work done through others in a really oh, yeah. um, caring, but with a really caring way. It's not a, uh, it's not objectifying others. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah. It's people feel supported by their leader if, when they're a type two leader. They feel challenged <laughs> because they can also be very direct because they are so attuned to you. They know what's going on in you. Mm. And even when they're direct, you feel supported by them. I think, I think a phrase might be fiercely loving. Mm. Type two. Very good. Trilogy Effect Managing Partner, Heather Morass, welcome to the show. Could you tell us a little bit about the achiever, also known as the performer? Who is this Enneagram type three? Hmm. That's a great lead into the type three. Who am I? Um, most type threes would be stopped in their tracks if they really had to answer that question because the type three is a very externally focused type. They are focused on producing and performing because if you remember, this is the center that is looking for attention. Mm -hmm. And so the way the type three gets your attention is by being the best, by figuring out what is valued out here in this situation and 
especially if I know what, what is needed out there, I will prepare, do my homework, practice, 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 so that when the time comes, I am going to perform to the utmost and I will be the best at it. I will outshine everybody. That is the attention I'm seeking and I work really hard at getting it. And so what is, um, you know, the asset here of the type three leader is that they have this just, it's, it, Wendy would call it their superpower is getting a sense of what's valued by others. And they are like chameleons at being able to provide it. So they are able to, oh, you value this? I can be that. I can produce that for you. They are naturals at marketing and at sales and PR. They are just um, amazing at positioning and communicating. They uh, have just this knack. I always say I have three envy. I wish I were a type three because it looks so darn good on them. Um, These are the people that can always read the room. Exactly. They walk in and it's da 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 da. They perform and they are the best. It's like, uh, you know, three walks in the room, it's like, it's showtime. Exactly. <laughs> and it just really is. And what happens, like the liability, when I, if I am a type three, the liability is I start to equate my inherent intrinsic value with whatever others are mirroring back to me. So this is where it gets to be a bit of a, a tragic cycle of I am busy performing to the outer world and I lose a sense of who I am. And when I stop because I'm exhausted from all my performing, I come up against this wondering who am I in here? What, you know, what's a value in here? If I'm not performing and producing and delivering, then what good am I? And so you get up close and personal with this sense of uh, deficiency, this like, I don't know who I am and why would anybody want to be with this? Because this unless... Is, yeah. we, we often hear people talk about imposter syndrome. Is yeah. That, that's kind of what you're talking about? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, every type has that. But, you know, the classic stereotypical example would be with the type three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've worked... we they're drawn to business, they're natural leaders. So we've all worked with many type threes. But I remember working with one years ago, where we were having a coaching session. And he said to me, you know, I've got it all. I've got the house, I've got the job, I've got the family, I've got the toys. And yet, why do I feel so empty inside? Mm -hmm. Just wondering what's what, what's going on in my life here. So the other, you know, if you turn that to what the gift is, um, again of the type three when a type three gets in touch with that and really has some compassion for themselves what starts to emerge is this beautiful authenticity this beautiful truth telling because again they're in the heart center so they're able to connect with the truth of what's going on about themselves they're willing to be personal and it can really bring out some authentic real life-changing communication and conversation around them and, you know, all three are, we keep saying they're in the heart center. And for the, you know, and so you can hear the theme as we're going through this. Um, and for the three, they, they do lose contact with their own heart's desire. And um, what I wanted to tag back to when Mary Beth was introducing the heart center is that all three of these types have a, um, a one of their big driver is, am I valuable or how do I prove my value? How do I prove my worth? How do I prove that I'm worthy? And so for type three, it's by achieving. It's by being the best and then getting the accolades for that. And then, and then suddenly deriving their sense of value from that. And as Heather said, what's mirrored back to them. Um, and for type two, it's being appreciated by others for all that I do for them and for being attuned to them and for meeting their emotional needs and being caring and loving. And therefore it gives me that mirroring that I need to feel lovable and valuable. These people are the classic workaholics, although all nine types can be workaholics, let's mm -hmm. face it. But when they start getting tired, when they're performing, performing and performing without rest, 
it's like your experience is one of, I'd like to connect with the person behind the mask. Because I did see that person once and I, it was beautiful. Mm. And, um, and that's the other thing we see. I mean, Mary Beth and I, we've worked with several type three leaders together. And what's always um, interesting to us is when they stop striving and trying to, you know, achieve what starts showing up around them is how much they're able to bring out the best in others. They are natural developers of people. They're very talented at seeing people's potential, coaching them, um, bringing out the best. I mean, around a healthy type three, you feel like you are something special. The true gift in the three. I mean, they are inherently connected to their own gifts and talents. And when they're in that kind of average level of awareness, not at their best, there's a lot of focus on that Mm -hmm. and developing themselves and achieving, achieving, achieving and seeking that admiration. And to Heather's point, when they're really healthy, they're so attuned to what other people's gifts and talents are and they really want you know they support them in developing those it's really it's a beautiful aspect of the type yeah a type three leader knows that by developing their people is going to be good for their business we work with a lot of them and finally let's talk about the enneagram type four the individualist mary beth tell us who these people are and what is it like when they tend to be leaders Okay, for our type fours, the individualists, we often joke that we don't see them very often in corporate captivity. It's not entirely true. Um, We can see them all over organizations, but these folks are so um, creative and don't tend to like to be so constrained that they're a little more rare in some of the um, organizations where we work. But our type four leaders, when we do see them, they're incredibly self-aware. Like the type three, there's an authenticity that they have. They almost can't not be authentic. Um, They, you know, are very attuned to their own emotions, to other folks' emotions, very sensitive and compassionate types. Um, There's a real depth to the type four. You know, if I know I'm, if I'm with one of my type four friends or type four clients, I'm not talking about the weather. You know, they're just not interested in the weather or whatever sports game, um, you know, they're, they're really wanting to connect on a human level with whoever they're talking to and really see that person and they're gifted at seeing other people and what's going on for them. Um, there's an attention to beauty with the type four, so we'll often see them in design and um, marketing and, and they have great, um, a great eye and aesthetic. Um, some of their liabilities, The type four leaders, they can over-identify with their emotions. So instead of, you know, I'm feeling sad today or I'm feeling depressed today, it's I am depressed. I am sad. And um, someone I used to work with, um, she's not a type four, but she had a very strong four wing and she would joke sometimes and just, you know, indulge herself and say, I'm just going to draw a bath of my emotions and have a good long soak in them. And I can (laughs) With the type four, they can, they can overindulge that side. Um, and they can also, it's an interesting thing. They want attention, but they also withdraw. So there's this aspect of almost withdrawing to get attention. Like, who's going to come follow me and find me? Oh, interesting. That I have hidden in. Um, and they can also be, you know, a little moody, a little temperamental. Um, because, again, like the emotions, they're very... They embrace the full spectrum of emotions, the, you know, what other people might consider to be, you know, ugly or quote unquote bad. I'm making air bunnies. Nobody can see that. Um, But for us, it's, you know, bring it all. I want it all. I'm good with it all. And sometimes can, again, overindulge in that. Yeah. But really, you know, at their best, incredibly attuned and sensitive and kind and aware of the gifts of the people around them and, you know, making sure that the people in the business are, are, um, how do I want to put this? Being attended to. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And also they long and look for, long for and look for creativity, creative outlet and expression. So you see them, they do not settle 
for less than something that is an authentic expression of their creativity. And we see this with uh, our type four clients where they're in roles that they end up being, they shine in the creative side of things like communication and advertising and packaging and design. They just, they think from this design, the, the purity of the, looking for the expression that just captures the essence of what it is they're working on. And whatever role they're in, they'll be creative about it. Like you can mm-hmm. find a type four accountant, which, you know, some of us might not think is the most creative. <laughs> um, you know, type well, creative accountants can be very creative. <laughs> <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> but lawyers, I've known several type four lawyers. Yeah. I know doctors who are type fours, um, uh, people who own yoga studios. I mean, they can be in any profession, but it's what they bring to it. And one of the things they bring to wherever they go that relates to what Heather and Mary Beth are saying, which is this, I have to be authentic no matter what, um, is significance and meaning. And so in a corporate setting, they're going to be constantly reorienting to the mission. Like, why are we in this together? And bringing people back to that. And with that, and with their work, um, even though they're not a perfectionist as in type one, they have a very strong connection to to perfectionism. They bring a certain aesthetic perfectionism to whatever they do and how they show up and, and, and actually can focus on their own flaws, continually trying to, um, you know, bring, uh, uh, perfect themselves similarly to a type one, but not the same, but there is a similar focus on how they're flawed. Hmm. Um, is so, there an example of someone famous that's, that you think presents as a type four? I think, you know, Prince would probably be kind of a oh. type four. Cher might be another type four. What do my partners think? Um, I agree, you know, I agree that they both present that way and you can see, you know, they, they point to the aesthetic quality, they point to the um, creative quality, they point to the perfectionistic quality. I mean, you know, Prince was really quite known as a perfectionist in his work. Um, and you can, somebody like Nureyev. Uh, also, you know, some people think that uh, Steve Jobs may have been a type. Yeah, he's what, he's who comes to mind for me from the business world. I mean, who knows? But when I listened to his authorized biography, so it was how he wanted to be seen in the world, um, I was really struck by his just orientation towards design and purity and... Temperamentalness. His temperamentalness. I don't know if that's a word, but we'll use it. And... Uh, just the nature of what motivated him was around beauty and expression and aesthetics and things holding together the way there's, you know, they've never been done before. Just, yeah. Yeah. He had to be different. He and wasn't he had following to be different. the whole PC thing, right? Yeah. The Apple yeah. was a completely different animal and, and type fours pride themselves in being unique and different. Yes. Yeah. And when you were talking, Wendy, I, I was actually thinking, I wonder if this is Steve Jobs that you're talking about. Okay. Um, what to add to Wendy's point, type twos, they're seeking appreciation. Threes are seeking admiration. And fours really do want to be seen as unique and special. So for type fours, some development opportunities for them. A lot of the time is spent feeling and then thinking about what they're feeling and in that loop between thinking and feeling and getting into their bodies is really good for someone who's a type four. So get moving, get out of the head into the body. And the other thing, this tags back to something Wendy said about how perfectionistic they can be and kind of hard on themselves and living in that um, kind of place of envy or, or longing is to really just acknowledge their gifts and talents and recognize that in themselves versus what they wish they had. Thanks to Mary Beth, Wendy, and Heather for joining us today. And also thank you to all you listeners. So each week, our follower numbers are growing, and we're very thankful for all of you who take time to, to listen in. So please see our show notes for links to some of, the, uh, some of the stories and resources that we discussed today. And please subscribe to our show and share a link to it 
with your friends. Of course, we'd love it if you could rate us on iTunes or iHeartRadio or, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is the Being Human is Good for Business podcast. 